three, two, one, zero, mission liftoff. At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station carrying the Obzon 3 payload. Now, during the rocket's ascent, we'll tilt the engines, the technical term for that being gimbling, and that's when we turn the rocket horizontally in what Power we call... telemetry is nominal. ...in what we call a gravity turn. The rocket will still be going up, but will now also be headed horizontally away from the launch pad. Moments ago, we also throttled the engines down in Power preparation... supersonic. ...in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. Max Q. And there's that call out for max Q, and this is when the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of aerodynamic stress as it ascends through the Earth's atmosphere. The rocket typically needs to go about 17,500 miles per hour horizontally, started. horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. As the vehicle continues to ascend, make sure to watch that telemetry at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Coming up shortly, we're going to have five events in rapid succession, starting with MECO, or main engine cutoff. This will be followed by stage separation. Then we'll have the stage one flip. This will be followed by the second engine start one. And then lastly, we'll have the boost back burn startup on the Falcon 9 first stage. And the sequence of events should start in about 10 seconds from now. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Stage one boost back startup. And there you heard and saw those events happening back to back with Miko, followed by stage separation, stage one flip, followed by the second engine start one, and then the stage one boost back startup. Coming up shortly will be a fairing separation. This is when we jettison the fairing halves away from the second stage. And as I mentioned earlier, both fairings are already flight proven and we'll be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again once they fall back to Earth. Fairing separation confirmed. And there's that call out for fairing separation. In just a few moments, we should see the boost back burn end on the Falcon 9 first stage. Stage one boost back shutdown. And there's a confirmation of boost back shutdown on the Falcon 9 first stage. It's T plus three minutes and 40 seconds into tonight's mission. Now, just past the T plus six minute mark, you should see on your screen the Falcon 9 first stage's entry burn. To start the entry burn, we'll relight three of the Merlin 1D engines, starting with the center engine known as E9, and this will be followed shortly after by the E1 and E5 engines, which slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down to reduce re-entry forces, which then helps us recover and reuse the first stage. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but it's still moving incredibly fast, and this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume, and this deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle. Now, given that tonight's mission is this booster's 10th overall, that soot layer is noticeably visible on the skin of the booster.
on the left hand side of your screen we've got live views from Mount our Falcon Nine, factory from our falcon 9 first stage and on the right side is a ground tracking shot of that booster as it descends back to earth And as I mentioned earlier, you can see the speed of that rocket with the telemetry shown at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. As I discussed earlier, reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical scientific research. The Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting tonight's mission will perform this entry burn for the 10th time. And that entry burn should start in about 25 seconds from now. Stage one entry burn to start up. And there's that confirmation of startup of the entry burn on our Falcon 9 first stage. As a reminder, on the left hand side of your screen is a view from the booster live, and the right side shows a ground tracking shot of the booster. Stage one entry burn shut down. Stage one FCS is saved. And there's confirmation of entry burn shutdown on the first stage. Now the Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. At liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. Double trajectory. And is consuming approximately 700 gallons of fuel per second. We also just heard that call out of nominal trajectory. Coming up in just about 10 seconds, we should see the landing burn start on our Falcon 9 first stage. Stage one is transonic. Second stage in terminal guidance. Stage one landing burn. And there's confirmation of the stage one landing burn. Stage two FDS is saved. Impact shut down. Landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you have it. This landing marks SpaceX's 261st recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. And as a reminder, we'll be ending the webcast here at the, request, orbit. at the request of our customer. We also just heard confirmation of nominal parking orbit.